Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, I'm just gonna go through uh, a couple of quick functions. Um, just basically going through how to change the tempo and the time signature in a session. Uh, so we can sort of move between maybe a couple of different time signatures and, and tempos. Um, you may wanna sort of speed up a song in a certain section. Um, there's lots of different ways to do it and there's, there's lots of levels on how I can show you to do that. But today, uh, I'm just going to do a simple sort of change from this tempo to the next and time and signatures accordingly. Uh, so let's just dive in here and have a look at this loop. Uh, thankfully, this loop has got a, a title. So in that title, it's telling me that it's in 6.8 and the BPM is 73. If you aren't sure of um, what the tempo is of a, of a loop, um, Logic's got this cool little plugin, it's called BPM. Um, and if you play that on top of it, uh, insert that on the track. And that's basically told us that it's 73 beats a minute. So that's very handy. Uh, of course, if something isn't, isn't recorded to click track or in time, then that will shift uh, and it won't sort of give you one number. It won't give you a static number anyway. It will give you lots of different numbers. Um, in this instance, we're fortunate to, to know that to know that it's now 73. So as you can see, it's not quite lining up to my bar range here. And my session is also in 4-4, which is typically uh, how I would run things anyway. In my template, I start at 4-4. Um, so the whole reason why I'm putting this video together is, as well is because I worked on uh, a couple of songs recently with an artist and the session that they provided me was, well, the song was in 6-8, had a, this kind of waltz, kind of this kind of 1-2-3, 1-2-3 feel to it, but the, the session and all the vocals and everything were in 4-4. Four, four. So it just made it easy for me when I was working with the session to change the time signature uh, and allowed me to sort of sequence things so when the chorus dropped it was on the start of a bar that kind of thing and i'll show you why that's important uh, so as you can see it's in 4-4 four, four. Uh, i'm going to change the tempo to 73 which is the native tempo of that loop as you can see now uh, it's definitely working within that range um, but the problem is it's not really i'll just hit play and i'll count it. i'll show you what i mean one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So as you can see there, the, the start of some of those beats are happening in the middle of a bar. Um, they're not happening sort of on the start of a bar. Um, so if you kind of expand that out, here we, we've only got here like just a sh one short loop of this song, but you go into three, you know, two, three minutes of this loop into a session and all of a sudden... Um, you know, all these, the start of the, where the kick drums happen are going to be in the middle of bars. And it just, it's just not a very, uh, can I say, it's just a lot more efficient and, and visually it's going to be a lot easier to sort of, um, to snap vocals to the start of sections and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so let's let's work out how to do that. So um, there's multiple different ways to change the time signature. My favorite way is to just go in the top here, the transport bar, choose the, the time signature. And as you can see now, it's, uh, it's four bars. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Two, three. You know, and that's basically now working uh, in that tempo. We've got four bars of the loop, it's in 6-8, and the kick drums are happening at the start of those bars. So there's basically six counts per bar, because we're in 6-8, um, and it's lining up beautifully. Uh, the next loop I have is at a different tempo, so let's just put this at the front here, and I'm just going to change the loop region. Um, and okay, and actually, just quickly, uh, another way to sort of look at this is to go through to global tracks, and it gives you all this information. Um, make sure your cursor is in the front of that bar. If I were to if I were to sort of put a new tempo right there in the middle of wherever that is, um, it will change it. 
the tempo where that my transport line is. So we want to put it put at the front there. And we're going to change the tempo to 91. So we can do it up here. We click it in, type it in. Um, I can also just hit a plus and then type it in here. This is a really handy way um, if you working with loops that have decimal places or you want to speed something up by half a beat a minute um, or if you like you can go to four decimal places so now that we're in this global tracks view we can also speed it up this way just by dragging it up and down uh, that's handy it's, quick, it's a very quick way of working so now as well it's the new loop is working at 6 8 91 beats a minute uh, and let's have a look at that As you can see, that basically cycles really well through the whole loop. It's quite a long loop. Uh, now, let's say that we just want to go... So let's just look at that transition now. We're going to go to the, from the end of this one into the next one. Okay. Now, let's say that we just, at the end of that bar, end of this loop, we wanted to go back to the first one. So we can basically just copy that over here. Of course, it's not going to work. Um, at 91, it's still playing. And it's not, you know, it's not really kind of working. It's, as you can see, it's not lining up. So we need to change the tempo. Again, go to the top. Um, we can hit plus uh, and go 73. And now we're back down to 73. Let's see how that sounds. We wanted to make it a little more musical. I've got this little harp thing here. And interesting with this um, harp loop I've got, the delays are also going to change. Um, so, example, the delays here, uh, because we're going from 73 to 91 beats a minute, they're going to just, there's going to be a little bit of a change there. And you can see that sort of glide up at the end there. It's because the tempo has changed in logic. Uh, so, back into here. Uh, but that might not be your cup of tea, but I'm just putting some random things together here today. Now, let's say that we want to move to the next loop, which um, is in 4-4. Uh, we would basically go here, uh, make sure this thing's in the start of the, uh, the bar. And it's also your yeah, 4-4, and it's also at 95 beats a minute. So time to change, go here, uh, move it up to 4-4. As you can see, it's not quite lining up uh, with the tempo. So, and now we can basically insert a new tempo. We'll go to 95 and the bars all match up. So let's just have a listen to that sounds. So there you go guys, that's um, how I'm doing tempo changes and time signature changes. Um, I hope that's been helpful for you. If you have any questions, uh, drop me a line, subscribe to the channel um, and learn more cool things in Logic uh, and have fun making music. Cheers.